my name is Joseph Quinn, uh, and for the next 10 minutes or so, I'll, I'll just be talking about my journey from project delivery, sort of boots on the ground engineering, to project data analytics. So the talk's called um, From Projects to Products. And just, just a bit about me, um, I'm a chartered mechanical engineer that's recently turned to uh, project data analyst, so I've had a slight career change. I've, I've got uh, five years experience in the uh, project delivery profession. Uh, and my background is uh, is mainly in railway engineering and uh, sort of digital site technology. So uh, my journey so far, um, I, I noticed we had someone from the audience or mentee from the University of Sheffield. So I graduated from the University of Sheffield uh, with a master's in mechanical engineering in 2016. And I started uh, my graduate scheme as a mechanical engineer on Crossrail back when it was just a concrete tunnel in that top left uh, picture there. And uh, the technical side of my job pretty much involved anything that moved. So lifts, escalators, smoke suppression systems in the case of a fire, uh, HVAC uh, and fire engineering systems. Uh, and then the managerial side of my job involved the package management for all the subcontractors responsible for those systems, um, the health, safety and well-being of at times 50 plus operatives. Um, all the neighbouring contractors that come with building uh, a railway through London. And then probably the first sort of introduction to data that I had was uh, reporting on the plan versus actual progress every month. Um, not too dissimilar to what John, John was describing with the A14, but looking at those S curves um, and forecasting and, and actualising at the end of every reporting cycle to the uh, senior management team and, and the client. Uh, and then in around 2019, I think it was early on, um, I found out about this community, the, the Project Data Analytics community, and I uh, registered myself for uh, back when we could meet in person, and I hope we can soon too, uh, a project hack at the Microsoft Reactor. Um, I forget which number it was. Um, and and learn about uh, Project Data Analytics and, and this emerging um, industry we're seeing. And I um, also I've also been attending the Project Hacks online. So I went to the hack in, uh, I think it was March, that was hosted online during lockdown. And I'm registered for next week's Hack 9. Um, and also attending all, all the meetup talks we've been having every every two weeks or so on a Wednesday, we have these talks. So it's great to hear from some of the leaders in, in this sphere on what they're doing, other businesses, and just over the years, seeing how much it's grown. So. Um, yeah, attending the talks and I think last year through lockdown where there wasn't too much else to do, um, did a bit of online training, self-teaching and CPD around uh, data and business intelligence, uh, looking at data modelling and, and mainly Power BI and DAX querying languages. Uh, and then waited patiently for a job where it was, it was my hobby, I was interested in it and I wanted to make that my full-time job. Um, and, and looking at the vacancies that were posted, I did start to notice more and more project roles being posted um, with with data as a requirement or understanding of data as a requirement. They really were emerging. Um, and then eventually my own company uh, around, I think it was around Christmas time, posted a role for a project data analyst. Um, and so using all those points I've got in the above, so the hacks, the talks, my own CPD, I uh, applied for the position. Um, had an assessment on, on Power BI with some dummy data and, and passed that, uh, then had the interview and having that understanding of what's going on in the industry really helped lead the interview and drive some really good conversations. And uh, that led me to working as a project data analyst at home, looking at canine nearest neighbours. And uh, I now work on a framework of uh, about 900 projects or so that's stored on a massive database and I'm starting to provide visuals to help drive performance and efficiencies, red flags, anomalies, anything that exceeds certain tolerances and starting to drive performance and, and efficiencies. So it's recently I've been in the role about three months and I'm really, really enjoying it and everything that I've sort of learned from the community is being put to some really good practical use. And people might ask, um, why, why make the move? Why, why, why would you move from um, sort of boots on the ground engineering to project data analytics? 
And it, all you really need to do is search data in Google News and you'll be inundated with articles. I think I've focused here mainly on sports, but um, of, of where data is being applied to industries. So I think it's the NBA have partnered with Microsoft to deliver fans at home um, all the stats and metrics around each basketball game so they can look at um, performance of each player during, during the live games. Uh, we've got Kevin De Bruyne, Manchester City and Belgian midfielder, actually used data analyst to broker his new £83 million deal with Man City. And he didn't use an agent for it, which is, is remarkable. Um, and also the same club, Man City, they're not just signing the biggest football players, they're signing some of the, the biggest names in data science to look at the team's performance uh, and make them a better club overall. And then some various topics we've talked um, in, in this community about how AI is going to is due to curb construction risk and improve decision making. So there's tons of news article and 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 they there's more and more every time you, you do the search that's really sort of exploding. Um, my personal aim is to make project professionals a bit more proactive and forward thinking. Anyone who's worked um, on a construction project or infrastructure will know and it's due to no fault of their own that uh, we spend a lot of the time firefighting and dealing with problems which have already happened and it doesn't leave us too much time to look at the risks ahead and on the horizon to sort of plan and prepare for them we're, we're very busy dealing with problems which have happened so i'd like to change that and give us a bit more of a foresight into what's coming up and how we can prepare for that uh, i'd like to see us eliminate decisions based on hunches or best guesses, but instead use data to actually drive our decisions and drive our project management. We spend so much effort collecting data and inputting data. We've got trackers for trackers because we collect so much data. And instead of just shelving that and it becoming sort of zombie data, actually putting that to life, creating some visuals, creating some insights around that data to, to manage our own performance. And we've also got Industry 4.0 and smart buildings, um, new technology, which a lot of organisations are adopting. And it's not just about gathering the data for the sake of it. It's actually running some insights and analytics on that data that will provide the productivity and performance efficiencies. So it's actually putting that data. Where do I see this heading? Um, I think what I'd like to see us have is sort of daily data dives in the same way we have sort of start of shift briefings. So pausing for 10, 10, 15 minutes a day, looking at our graphs, figures, trends, and see where our projects are going so we can manage them a bit better. I think it's going to free up uh, project managers, planners and controllers time so they can make faster decisions and, and deal with other aspects of the project, such as the, the human side of them. Um, or just have conversations which would otherwise go amiss. This data, when it's stored in that tabular format, becomes sort of invisible. You can't see it too clearly. So when you visualise, it actually sparks new conversations which you normally wouldn't have. And then I think uh, it's going to help us start to recognise more patterns. And I've put in a quote, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. And I say that with a picture of Bill Gates giving a talk about an uh, influenza pandemic, I think back in 2016, saying that the Spanish flu is due to repeat itself any day now. And uh, he knew it was coming. We knew, well, it, history has uh, rhymed, uh, but we didn't really prepare for it. We didn't plan too well for it. Um, and I'm not talking on, on the scale of a worldwide pandemic, but definitely more localised project, uh, high risk black swan events to start looking at those patterns uh, and planning and preparing for them to, to minimise our risk. And uh, I won't say the S word that Apple used in, in fear of waking up my phone and calling half my contact list, but you might walk into your uh, project one day and similar to what um, John, John was saying earlier, is you say, hey AI, how is, how is my project doing? And your uh, virtual project manager assistant might, might say, oh, uh, England were on penalty shootouts with Germany last night in the Euros, therefore everyone's come into work tired and your risk of injury is higher. Um, there's wind forecasts for lunchtime to stop all your crane activities and your, your risk score has upgraded from a level four to level five and just giving that sort of 
project data dump to, to your manager to, to go and deal with. Um, my tips and advice, so for anyone that is looking for uh, a similar move, a similar career change, uh, what tips and advice would I give them? So I'd say if your employer is adaptive, uh, one solution would be to reskill. Apprenticeships aren't necessarily for, for, for young people. You could be of any age to, to reskill. Um, so looking at a, a, something like an apprenticeship scheme or a sponsored education, or for anyone in the audience from, from university, uh, looking at some uh, selective or elective modules which might revolve around data. Um, and I understand that not every employer is as flexible um, to give you that sort of time to go away and learn. And, and if they're not, uh, I've just put together a, a five step recipe that might serve as an alternative. And so step one, I'd say is, is become, try and become an Excel ninja. So go deep in Excel. Um, not only is it one of the most common data tools in the world, but a great platform to learn core analytical concepts like data profiling, visualizations and some basic programming. Uh, step two would, would be looking at a querying language like SQL. Um, learn how to build, maintain and query databases. Learn about primary and foreign keys, different join types. And then once you've done that, you could add that you have an understanding of something like SQL to your CV, which should help in an interview or um, your employability prospects. I think step three would then be to go on and look at a full stack BI tool like Power BI or Tabulo. Um, and all of the features, I mean, Power BI grows by the month, um, but I think this will help you connect the dots from extract, transform to load to, to modeling and then running the actual analysis and visualization. And just remember to keep a portfolio of everything you've worked on. Um, I mean, I, I used to, I, I made a coronavirus dashboard during lockdown and a Premier League table and just having a portfolio of, of those projects can really help show, show that you're interested. Um, for me and my advice would be to go deep and then add tools. Um, so when I went into the data world, it was quite overwhelming at first. You had which, which uh, BI tool do you use? Which language do you learn? Got machine buzzwords like machine learning and AI and it can all be a bit overwhelming at first not really knowing where to start so you find yourself with a bit of analysis paralysis so I'd say just master a few um, become so for me that's Power BI uh, DAX and SQL just start mastering a few topics and then start to add tools to the tool belt as you progress um, and then lastly, keep up to date with the with the world, what's going on in the data world. Just keep attending talks like this, uh, hack events, network with people in the audience. And it might be micro changes, like how you watch the news. Um, for example, Ed Conway on Sky News does a daily data dive and he tells the news through graphs and figures. And you can really learn some nice skills about how data storytelling is done. Um, and how they present their, their visuals is just small little changes like that can really, really help you.